Hello, my name is Gabriel Vizgon, and I will be presenting our findings on a systematic review and meta-analysis of surgical outcomes of reconstructive surgery resulting from ketamine cystitis. Ketamine cystitis is a lower urinary tract symptom complex that arises from the recreational abuse of ketamine. Symptoms generally include lower urinary tract pain and difficulty urinating. Light users of the drug are able to experience symptoms relief upon permanent cessation of drug use. However, heavy users often require surgical intervention regardless of cessation. Ketamine was recently approved by the FDA as an antidepressant. However, its long use as a recreational drug has not been well documented. Ketamine has grown in popularity as a recreational drug over the past 20 years, and many of you have likely already seen the symptom complex in your own respective clinics. This is an English language literature review of surgical outcomes in ketamine cystitis patients who underwent reconstructive lower urinary tract surgery or a urinary diversion through 9-15-2019. Some of the search terms used and the data points extracted are present on this slide. Two independent researchers read each paper's title, and if both found the paper to be relevant, its abstract was read, and then subsequently the paper itself. All disagreements regarding relevance were settled by a third party. Continuous variables were reported as mean plus minus standard deviation, and categorical data are represented by number and percentage. This statistical significance of our data was found by acquiring p-values calculated using a paired one-tail t-test. Statistical assessments were considered to be significant when p was less than 0.05. Our search yielded 21 relevant papers yielding 822 patients that were documented as having ketamine cystitis, of whom 17% underwent reconstructive surgery while 83% of them did not. Exclusion criteria included papers that are consistent solely of non-surgical outcomes and those written in any language other than English. This chart represents the patient demographics we were able to extrapolate from the literature search. This highlights just how poor the data is on this particular disease complex, as only about 30% of the patients described in this literature had their sex dated. This data is disconcerting because of the apparent rapid progression from beginning of ketamine abuse to end-stage bladder. There was, on average, only one year difference between the duration of ketamine abuse in those patients who underwent surgery and those that did not. This suggests that the time interval from the beginning of ketamine cystitis until end-stage bladder and urethral involvement may be measured in months or a year, confounding the decision-making about optimal time to consider lower urinary tract reconstruction. This is especially relevant insofar as lower bladder, low bladder capacity, low compliance, and hydronephrosis are not likely to resolve after cessation of ketamine abuse. Non-surgical treatments included anti-muscarinics and non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, cystoscopic hydrodistension, and intravesical installation therapy with hyaluronic acid or herapin. Surgical options for those with end-stage bladder included augmentation enterocystoplasty, partial or sub-trigonal cyst cystectomy with enterocystoplasty, simple cystectomy or cystoprostatectomy, and creation of neobladder or urinary diversion. Here we have the meta-analysis of all surgical outcomes present in the literature. Voids per day, maximum voided volume, bladder capacity, bladder compliance, and post-void residual volume all saw statistically significant improvements upon follow-up. The results varied and the lengths of follow-up were not standard. However, we believe this is adequate proof in order to state that surgical intervention is a viable option for treating late-stage ketamine cystitis. This table represents the complications arising from the various surgeries present in the literature. The data is poor, but the overall complication rate appears to be low. In conclusion, the data is very poor. There are very few patients recorded, and the disease complex is not well known. Ketamine cystitis is a devastating disease that will most likely rise in prevalence in the coming years. This data is disconcerting because of the apparent rapid progression from the beginning of ketamine abuse to the end stage bladder. There was, on average, only a one-year difference between the duration of ketamine abuse in those patients who underwent surgery and those that did not. This suggests that the time interval from the beginning of ketamine cystitis until end-stage bladder and urethral involvement may be measured in months or a year, confounding the decision-making about the optimal time to construct, consider lower urinary tract reconstruction. Surgery does seem to be a viable route when dealing with late-stage ketamine cystitis, and excellent outcomes can and should be expected, provided that patient does not go back to ketamine.